Pina koutou katoa. Um, good afternoon. I hope the day is treating everyone well. Um, as is our usual practice, I'll begin by handing over to Dr. Bloompil for the latest update on cases and testing numbers, and then uh, we'll run through a bit of an update before taking your questions. Dr. Bloompil. Thank you, Prime Minister. Kia ora koutou katoa. Uh, so today, uh, the new total number of new cases uh, is nine, and this comprises four confirmed and five probable cases. All of today's cases are linked to confirmed cases. And the new total of combined confirmed and probable cases in New Zealand is 1,431. There are now 912 uh, reported cases of COVID-19 that have recovered from their infection, an increase of 45 on yesterday. Today, there are 18 people in hospital around New Zealand with COVID-19. This includes three people in ICU, one each in Middlemore, Dunedin and North Shore hospitals. Two of these people are in a critical condition. There are still 16 significant clusters around the country, no change from yesterday. And 12 more cases have been connected to clusters, including some of today's and others from previous days. Yesterday, 4,146 tests were processed in our laboratories around the country. So the rolling seven day average is 3,151 and a total of 83,224 tests have been conducted to date. And our stock and supply for laboratory testing is now over 90,000 complete tests. Sadly, I am confirming that the death that occurred in Invercargill in the community on Tuesday evening last week is now confirmed as being a COVID-19 related death. I'm extending my sincerest sympathies to the family and I do ask that you also continue to respect their privacy. Over the last few days, there have been specific efforts in a range of places around the country to do uh, wider community testing to help confirm for us that there is no underlying community transmission of COVID-19. You'll have heard that the testing in Queenstown and in a number of places in the Waikato uh, on Thursday and Friday respectively showed no positive tests. And there was testing undertaken in Auckland yesterday. A total of 442 samples were tested with about three quarters of those results processed. None of those tests have been positive. Uh, they, again, those results and other testing that we will be doing during this coming week, particularly around any cases we find, like the one in Whanganui in the last day or two, where it's not clear what the source is, we will do some wider testing. And that, again, does help assure us that there isn't undetected community transmission of COVID-19 happening. Uh, in terms of healthcare workers, we have 131 healthcare workers who are confirmed or probable uh, COVID-19 cases, 43 of them have recovered. Our total, uh, of our total cases, 50% were infected in the workplace, either from colleagues, patients, or residents in the case of uh, ARC facilities. When we analysed these cases last week, it was clear that a relatively small number had in fact been infected by residents or patients, and that most of the transmission was between healthcare workers, some of whom had been infected outside of the workplace. We're continuing to keep a close eye on this and I've asked for an updated analysis of that new number of 131. And finally, I just want to thank today uh, the many people working in our public health services around the country who have really been at the forefront of both detecting cases, following up close contacts and investigating any clusters over the last couple of months uh, in New Zealand. They've been working around the clock uh, and seven days a week, and I just want to thank them for their efforts in helping lead New Zealand's response to this. So thank you very much uh, to those workers and to all of those essential workers and healthcare workers who are supporting our overall response. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Dr Bloomfield. If I could um, take the opportunity to add my thanks to the members of our public health units from um, around the country who, as Dr Bloomfield has said, have been working 24-7 for a long time now as part of that really critical part of our process for managing COVID-19, and that is contact tracing. Um, I actually hope that sometime next week I might be able to take a Zoom call with some of the team leaders for those PHUs just to pass on my thanks 
uh, for the role they play that most New Zealanders may not have even known existed until now, and yet were a critical part of the response to the measles outbreak we had um, only some months ago, and off the back of that coming straight into COVID-19, they're doing an exceptional job. As I have no doubt everybody in New Zealand is acutely aware, Cabinet meets tomorrow to discuss our current COVID Alert Level 4 and to determine uh, whether to extend it beyond the current deadline, which is, uh, you'll be aware, um, is uh, midnight on Wednesday. Before I go over how we as a group of ministers will make that decision, I want to acknowledge that we have been successful to date in rolling out our plan because we've had a plan and we've stuck to it and we've done it together. We have stayed home, we have saved lives and we are breaking the chain of transmission. And the numbers back this up with the data coming through from Google location tracking showing a huge drop in traffic in our cities as well as far fewer visits to places like beaches and parks. I know it hasn't been easy, but it has been working. No matter the outcome, of Cabinet's deliberations tomorrow. It is important to remember that this is going to be a long-term project for us all. A move to Alert Level 3, whenever it comes, is not a return to pre-COVID-19 life for any of us. What eventually changes at Alert Level 3 is that more of the economy is able to come back online, but our social lives, sadly, will not. If we move too quickly in that area, we undo the good work we have done collectively over some very long days indeed. With that in mind, Cabinet will meet at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, we have given it an earlier time frame so that we have time for those deliberations. And then we will be sharing the decision that's being made with all of you at 4 p.m. Um, the same day. Dr Bloomfield will be joining me for that announcement given the strong role that health plays um, in the decision making and the deliberations um, that ministers will be a part of tomorrow. Just a quick reminder that there are several things that ministers will consider and these were criteria discussed by ministers some time ago. That criteria includes that the Director General of Health is satisfied or their level of satisfaction that there is sufficient data from a range of sources including testing and surveillance that public health experts, statisticians and modellers can have reasonable certainty that undetected community transmission is unlikely. Secondly, there is sufficient rigorous and rapid case identification and contact tracing with surge capacity available in the case of an outbreak. Thirdly, our self-isolation, quarantine and border measures are robust and adhered to. And finally, there is capacity in the health system more generally, including the workforce, ICU capacity, plus the availability of PPE for those for whom it is recommended. Alongside that, we'll look at the evidence of the effects of the measures on the economy and on society more broadly, public attitudes towards the measures, and the extent to which people and businesses understand, accept, and are overall complying with them and the ability to operationalise restrictions, including satisfactory detailed implementation planning by our all of government team and government agencies. That essentially is all of the information, data and analysis that we will provide in determining New Zealand's next move. Now I share this with you because we have been open and transparent throughout this fight against COVID-19 and I personally believe really strongly that it is only fair since we are all in this together we need to all keep working together for success, and that means us sharing with everyone uh, the factors we'll be taking into consideration and the data we use. And every day when we come down and share what we know about uh, our testing and our positive cases, how they relate to clusters, that's information that uh, I receive only a few hours before the public receives it, and that's because uh, this is a mission that we're all on together, and that is why we've been transparent in sharing all of that information as we've gone along. If we can look back, though, it is incredible to think of how slip swiftly we all acted together. It's hard to believe that it is only 32 days since we closed our borders to all but returning New Zealanders on March the 19th. 30 days since we announced our COVID alert level system, which was on the 21st of March, and 25 days since lockdown began at 11.59 on Wednesday, March 25th. During that time, our focus has been to protect the health of New Zealanders, 
And alongside this, we've acted to cushion the economic blow as well to keep as many New Zealanders in jobs as possible and to help businesses remain viable. We do not underestimate the economic impact this has taken on everyone. And that's why we've had that um, multi-billion dollar investment uh, set of investments. The 12-week wage subsidy scheme, the government-backed business finance scheme with banks, the business support package for our smaller and media-sized organisations, and extra financial support for students. The decision to move New Zealand to Elite Level 4 was the right one for our health and for our economy. And as you will have heard many of us say, the best thing for the economy has always been to stop the virus. But I do want to finish today by saying thank you in that vein to a very special group, many of whom have been going through an incredibly hard time, but who I've often heard reflecting that in spite of what we are experiencing, that they still recognise the collective mission we all have right now. That group are our small business owners and operators. Nobody underestimates how hard the situation is for all of you, but I want to thank you for pouring so much effort into keeping your staff employed and working so hard to keep everyone afloat for the time when you can get back up and running. We've put $9 billion into the wage subsidy to help keep more than 1.5 New Zealanders in jobs, but that wouldn't have worked without businesses making applications and giving their all to keep their staff, who many of them consider their family, connected to work. We are in this together because that is the only way this will work. But I do want to say thank you for your efforts and I know New Zealanders will continue to keep acting together to stay safe. We're happy to take your questions. Dr. Can I ask yeah, you about um, our contact tracing capacity? There's mm -hmm. been some criticism or questions, I guess, in the past few